Finally, all of you be like-minded and sympathetic. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you are called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are inclined to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who can harm you if you are zealous for what is good? Blessed be your name, O Lord God Almighty, and Jesus Christ your Son, worthy of all our praise. We ask now that you help us understand your words by the power and wisdom of your Holy Spirit for our edification and training in righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. We're temporarily leaving our study on 1 Corinthians. On Tuesday night, I had a dream, and I don't normally pay attention to my dreams because not all dreams are from God and not all of them have meanings. However, on Tuesday night, I dreamt vividly about 1 Peter 3, verse 10. I am not familiar with this verse, and in my dream, I was frantically trying to look up 1 Peter 3.10, only to wake up before being able to do so. So when I woke up, I looked up 1 Peter 3.10 in my Bible, and the full context of that verse is what we will be studying today, as it is what I preached on Sunday. By way of understanding the background of 1 Peter, 1 Peter was written to the early Christians scattered everywhere in the Roman Empire, who were undergoing distress because of intense persecution. The quotation from verses 10 to 12 was taken from Psalm 34, verse 12 to 16b. Psalm 34 was written by David also during a time of distress when he was being hunted by King Saul out of jealousy. If you read the superscription in Psalm 34 just before verse 1, it says, Of David when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech, so that the king drove him away. Because of the threat on his life, David left Israel and went to seek refuge in Gath, which is a Philistine territory. The Abimelech, or king of Gath at that time, was Achish. When he got to Gath, there were some who saw David who said, Isn't this David who killed Goliath? Of course, Goliath was a Philistine, so David became afraid. When Achish went out to meet him, David faked insanity so that Achish drove him away. And if you read Psalm 34, verse 12 to 13, which was quoted by Peter in 1 Peter 3.10, David talked about not lying and not deceiving people. In essence, it was a rebuke to his own actions of not trusting in the Lord and resorting to deception. Problems, especially of the life and death kind, bring stress and pressure which leads us to do crazy things if we are not careful. This study today is a reminder of what Christians should do and how Christians should react in times of distress. In times of distress, it is our duty to avail of Christ's grace according to verses 8 to 9. In times of distress, it is our duty to adhere to Christ's words according to verses 10 to 11. And in times of distress, it is our duty to abide in Christ's promises according to verses 12 to 13. In times of distress, a veil of Christ's grace according to verses 8 and 9 in order for us to calm our thoughts. Look at the first part of verse 8. Finally, all of you, be like-minded and sympathetic. You see, when we are distressed, our knee-jerk reaction is to be afraid. And when we are afraid, we cannot think straight. We panic. But verse 8 says to be like-minded and sympathetic. Other translation says be harmonious, which is exactly the correct word. Harmony consists of different notes but sounding good together. The verse is not calling us to think exactly the same, but what Peter is telling us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is that in times of distress, We need to be calm so we can think in a way that is not confusing to those around us. Sympathetic is also a musical term that speaks of harmony. If we are in a panic mode, we sound dissonant and confusing. But when we are calm, we are able to think clearly. But how can we be calm in times of distress? Simple, by availing of Christ's grace. 
You cannot be calm in times of distress unless you first turn to Christ. So instead of giving in to fear or panic upon learning of a great problem, we simply pray. Stop and pray. Take your battles and problems to prayer. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's exactly what Moses told the Israelites when they were being pursued by Pharaoh. Instead of complaining, we need to pray. Exodus 13, 14 to 15 says, But Moses told the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the Lord's salvation, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. We cannot be calm on our own. We need the grace of Christ Jesus our Lord to be calm, to be still in times of distress and start praying. We also need to avail of Christ's grace in order to be considerate in our actions. When we are scared, we go on self-preservation mode. That means we do selfish things. But Peter is telling us that when we are faced with distress, we need to be considerate to others. Look at the second part of 1 Peter 3 verse 8. Love us, brothers, be tender-hearted and humble. In other words, even in times of distress, it is not about you. It is about loving others. And only by the grace of Christ can we do that. Consider 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the suffering of Christ overflow to us, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. God wants us to be a blessing to others in times of trials and tribulations. As we are going through our problems, God wants to use us and be of comfort to others experiencing the same hardship. And only the grace of Christ can we do that. We also need to avail of Christ's grace in order to be careful in how we respond in times of distress. Verse 9 reads, Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. Instead of seeking vengeance on those who wronged us, we need to let go and forgive. And only by the grace of Christ can we do that. Sometimes our problems come about not because someone wronged us. Nevertheless, we need to be careful in how we respond. Sometimes because of our problems, we become hot-headed, We are angry and yell at everybody. We must not do that. We need to rely on the grace of Christ in order to not let anger take over. Look at Psalm 37, 8. Refrain from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret. It can only bring harm. Anger does not bring anything good. It doesn't solve the problem. It only adds to it. So in times of distress, we need to avail of Christ's grace in order to be calm in our thoughts, to be considerate in our actions, and be careful in how we respond. Next, in times of distress, we need to adhere to Christ's words according to 1 Peter 3, verses 10 to 11. In times of distress, we need to adhere to Christ's words by loving truth and integrity according to verse 10. Verse 10 reads, For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. We must not be like David who resorted to deception in order to escape the problem. As Christians, lying should not even be considered as a solution to our problem. But many Christians do it all the time. We try to save face with a lie. We try to cover up our mistakes with a lie. We think lying is the best solution to the problem, but according to this passage, it is the worst decision. God hates liars. If we are Christians, we should not lie in order to get away from our problems. Ephesians 4, 20-25 But this is not the way you came to know Christ. Surely you heard of Him 
and were taught in Him, in keeping with the truth that is in Jesus. To put off your former way of life, your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. To be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Verse 25, Therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one another. Look at Ephesians 4.25 again. We must put off falsehood and speak truthfully at all times, even in times of distress. In times of distress, we need to adhere to Christ's words by leaving evil and loving righteousness. The first part of 1 Peter 3.11 says, He must turn from evil and do good. Don't resort to doing what you know from the Word of God is evil in order to solve your problem. Cheating is not the answer. Stealing is not the answer. Obedience to God's Word is the answer. Romans 16 verses 19 to 20 says, Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice over you, but I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. If you want to see God crush Satan under your feet, then learn to obey the words of our Lord Jesus. Don't take the easy way out of your problem by doing that which God does not want you to do. Instead, learn to obey the Lord, even if you have a problem. Be obedient in giving your tithes despite your financial problems. Be obedient in serving the Lord in spite of your problem. Be obedient in living a holy life, even if it means being ostracized. In times of distress, we need to adhere to Christ's words by living a peaceful life, according to the second part of 1 Peter 3.11, which reads, He must seek peace and pursue it. In times of distress, it's more important than ever to live a peaceful life. Romans 12.18 says, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. In other words, don't fight with your spouse or your children in times of distress. Learn to be obedient to God's word by loving truth and integrity, by leaving evil and loving righteousness, and by leading a peaceful life. If we do everything that we have discussed so far in the first and second point, then and only then can we abide in Christ's promises, even in times of distress. Sadly, many Christians skip verses 8 to 12. They want to jump right into the promises without taking the time to abide in Christ's grace and adhering to His word. Let's look at the first half of verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Now, who are the righteous? Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who can claim to be righteous except those who have repented from their sins and put their faith in Christ Jesus for their salvation. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30 says, It is because of Him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. If you are born again by grace through faith in Christ, you are righteous. And the first part of 1 Peter 3.12 says, God will look over you even in times of distress. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9a, For the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro over all the earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are fully devoted to him. If we fully devote our minds on Christ and live our lives obediently to Christ, we can be assured that God will watch over us. Not only will God look over us, He will also listen to our prayers according to the second part of verse 12, which reads, And His ears are inclined to their prayer. This is a promise for us by our Lord Jesus Christ. If we stand on His word, He will listen to us. James 5 verse 16b says, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. In times of distress, we need to abide in the promise of Christ that He will live with us according to the third part of verse 12, which reads, But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Another way to read this verse, you see, is if the Lord is against those who do evil, then we can say that the Lord is with those who are righteous. See, God dwells or lives with His people. Hebrews 13.5 says, Keep your lives from the love of money and be content 
with what you have. For God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. If we are righteous in Christ and we remain in Christ, the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. He will always be with us. He will live with us. In times of distress, abide in Christ's promise that He will lovingly protect you, according to verse 13, which reads, Who can harm you if you are zealous for what is good? Psalm 5.12 says, For surely you, O Lord, bless the righteous. You surround them with a shield of your favor. Shield, of course, is synonymous to protection. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 also says, If all this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. In times of distress, we need to avail of Christ's grace. We need to adhere to Christ's words and we need to abide in Christ's promises. That is our duty in times of distress. So I only have one question for you. Have you made Jesus Christ the rock of your salvation? And I pray that you have. of my